Let's chat. 22 things I learned in my 22 years of life, part four. Well, you can do what you wanna, live how you wanna, spin what you wanna, be who you wanna be. Play out stunner. If you haven't seen parts one, two, and three, this is a mini series of what I'm learning in this phase of my life. I recently turned 23, so I thought it'd be nice to kind of share the lessons that I'm learning in real time. Also, before I start, it's pouring rain right now, so that's why I'm all cozy, and you might hear the rain, so hopefully that's not annoying. So let's continue with number 12. It's okay to change your mind. I think it's really important to accept that it's normal to change your mind about your career path, your interests, your hobbies, everything. It's like when you're little and you change your mind about what you want to be when you grow up like every other week and there's absolutely no shame behind it because you're just changing your mind. And I get that there's probably more riding on a career change at this age than there is at five years old, but I think a lot of times what goes into the hesitation when making a change like that is just what people are gonna think, if people are gonna judge you and that kind of thing. And how I'm trying to navigate this is by kind of detaching the decisions I make and what I do from who I am as a person, like figuring out who I am as a person first and then whatever decisions I make, it's kind of like my fashion sense changing as I grow up. Like the thing is you could totally one day just learn something completely new that you never knew before and all of a sudden you develop this immense passion for it and you decide to pursue that and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So you, there's just always that possibility that you find something new that you like and you want to change your mind and you want to do that. And I don't think that should be attached to who you are as a person. And some people want to make that attachment for you, whether it's just like your parents or society or something. Sometimes people want to try and put you in that box, but I think it's really important to constantly remind yourself that who you are as a person isn't necessarily attached to what your career is or like, like your fashion sense or something. Like that can change and evolve as you change and evolve but just like you're, you're at your core, who you are is really what kind of stays the same throughout your life. I'm just trying to say that you're allowed to change your mind. You're allowed to change your mind six times a day, one time a day, like once a week you can change your mind. Like I'm going through this phase where I love to paint my nails red and I changed, I decided to change this week to a like darker color and I love it. And obviously that's something so um, surface level and small, but career choices, like, I could, I could meet someone tomorrow that has this career that I've never heard about and I'm like, you know what, I kind of want to do that too and try it out and maybe I don't like it and change my mind again. I'm getting carried away, but I'm basically just trying to say it's okay to change your mind about anything. And that one goes perfectly into my next lesson that I'm learning is people pleasing. <laughs> people pleasing is just not, it's not the move, it's not it. I don't know how else to say, like, it's just not... There's a time and a place, I think, for putting your own feelings aside and putting someone else first, but it's like with the changing your mind thing. I kind of got lucky where I never felt forced to pursue a career path by my parents necessarily, but there is always that societal pressure kind of of going for the safe career or going for something that you know will make people feel proud of you. But I think it's really, really important to just think about what I want as a person. This also applies not even in a career thing, like this applies to something like friendships. I am someone that loves spending time with my friends. The maximum amount of time I can spend with them, I want to do that, I want to see them 24 seven, but I also like my alone time. And I'm also the type of person who's very sensitive to the vibes in the room. So I've gotten really good at, if I don't want to be somewhere or if I don't want to do something, I'm very vocal about it with my friends and just honest and I think people appreciate when you're honest with them. I mean, I know people appreciate when you're honest with them. So it's like if you flip it the other way around, I would never want to drag my friend to something that they really don't want to go to. I'd rather they be honest with me and tell me, listen, like I really don't feel like doing that. But I think people respect that actually when you stand up for what you actually want to do. And that's not necessarily to say be selfish, but just think about it flip the other way around. You wouldn't want to bring someone to something that they don't want to go to because then they'd probably be moping and 
not be having a good time and you know they don't really want to be there. So yeah, people pleasing, I think there's a time and a place to put someone else first, but I think there's also a time and a place to put yourself first and to at least vocalize what you want. The next lesson that I'm like battling with slash learning is how to balance being present in the moment while also being super ambitious. Like, I am incredibly ambitious and I always catch myself daydreaming or wanting the future to just come now. And so the one thing is I do not want to grow up and then look back and think my whole early 20s I spent wishing for the future when I could have been enjoying the present. And it's one that I'm battling with so badly because I have this vision for how I want my future to unfold. And I know that that vision is just gonna change over time, but I have these goals and these ideas and it's making me not present. And so I'm trying to figure out, okay, what can I do in my life now that will help me keep my goals, but also appreciate this time in my life because this is also such a good time in my life. And I think for one, Something like journaling is always great. I love to write. Some people don't like to write, so it might not be for everyone. But I think like gratitude journaling, just a list of things that I'm grateful for is always great. Something that has helped me a lot after college was I came back and I moved in with my parents again. And at first my room was the same room that I had in high school. And for me, that was just like, it just did not feel right with me. So I redid my room to be more like my apartment that I had in college. And now my room is so peaceful. Whenever I walk in, it's like, whew, like I can breathe, like this is my room. It didn't feel as temporary, although it is something that's temporary. It just was nice to make it my own space. So redoing my room was something that was really helpful for that. And I also think, and I also think, <laughs> I also think, I also think, what? I also think nothing. I also think something like finding activities to do in my hometown is helping me be more present. Like me and Giovanna, one of my best friends, we found this place that we like to go out to every Friday and so we're regulars there and that's never something that I experienced when I was living here in high school. So it's just kind of, I don't know, I think it's so important to appreciate what's going on now no matter what the situation is, even if I want the situation to be different. It's just important for me to appreciate it because this always happens where you can appreciate the moment when you look back on it, but when you're actually in the moment, you're never appreciating it. And I actively want to not do that. I act, I want to actively prevent, prevent that from happening. <laughs> so I just, I, I keep telling myself, yes, I can chase my dreams. I can have these visions for the future. I can daydream once in a while, but I don't want to get caught up in hoping, hoping, hoping while I'm completely missing out on my life that's happening right now. So finding that balance between being present and being ambitious and having goals. I think I'm gonna keep it short and sweet today. So thank you so much for listening. You're the best. We're only on number 14 out of 22. So I will see you in part five. Let me know if you like this nail color. I'm loving it. I'm also trying to be a ring girl. I hope you're doing, I never asked in this whole video if you're doing great. I hope you're doing great. I'm doing well. I'm about to get cozy. It's Sunday and I'm gonna read a book. I'm reading a book about AI right now. I'm the kind of person, let me take this off. I'm the kind of person where I just wanna know everything there is to know about everything possible. I wish I could just fill my brain with a million books at once, but I love biographies. I love just everything nonfiction, nonfiction? Yeah, nonfiction. Um, I'm reading a book about AI and like developing it and working with it like in um, like companies and things like that and I love it and if you have any book recommendations, send them my way. I just love to learn. I just want my brain to expand. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. You're awesome. I'll see you in part five. <laughs> love you. Well, you can do what you want.